Hey guys, it's Ashley from Wholesaling Out of the Box. I'm here today with Sean Bowen, Cam Peters, and Jacob McPherson to discuss Chapter 8 of Traction by Gina Wickman. So, Sean, go ahead and take it away. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be getting into Chapter 8, which is uh, discussing the traction component uh, for your business. This is one that I think we as a company do really well at. Um, and this was one that was a game changer for me when I first started as an owner trying to bring um, employees on or people to work with me and team members. Um, this is something that we really do well at. So we'll, we'll get through this. Uh, one of the things you'll hear us speak to is the meeting pulse we call the huddle call. Um, so that's, that's one that you'll hear us talk about throughout this. Um, let's get into it. So action is the process of doing. That's what this chapter is all about. Gaining traction means making your vision a reality. At this moment, your vision is crystal clear. You have the right people in the right seats. You're managing data. You're solving issues. You've defined your way of doing business, and everyone is following it. Now you're ready to master the organizational tra traction. <clears throat> the final piece of the puzzle, mastering the, five, the first five components of essential was essential before tackling this component because without them you might gain traction but in the wrong direction when the first five components are strong you will take off in the right direction which is towards your vision the ability to create accountability and discipline and then execute in this area of greatest weakness is is the greatest weakness of most organizations um, i want to stop here for just a second because this piece is a really big one uh, controlling your numbers, having the team members where it says having the right, the right butt and the right seat. That's a massive piece of this. Um, and then those people being very strong in that position. And I think we as a team right now do really well at that, which is actually like a running joke with us <laughs> about staying in your lane. <laughs> so remember this when you're doing this, stay in your lane, do what you do, what you know you're to do. Um, and if there are things that you want to talk about, bring them up in a huddle call. Um, all right. So I lost my place. <laughs> all right. The ability to create accountability and discipline and execute is one of the greatest weaknesses of most organizations. So most leaders know that bringing discipline and accountability to the organization will make people a little uncomfortable. This is inevitable, uh, part of creating traction. What usually holds an organization back is the fear of creating the discomfort. But you, do, you don't have to have any other option. Hey, man, what did I just read? <laughs> but you don't, you don't have any other option if you want to build a great company. If you can accept the fact that you're going to make people a little uncomfortable for a short time, the solution is actually straightforward. You need to implement two simple practices. First, Everyone must be specific and measure priorities. Second, you must meet better as an organization. The two essential are called rocks and the meeting pulse. So let's talk about what rocks are. With a clear long-term vision in place, you're ready to establish short-term priorities that contribute, contribute to achieving your vision. You will establish, establish the three to seven most important priorities for the company the one that must be done in the next 90 days. Those priorities are called rocks. Your company will have rocks, each member of your leadership team will have rocks and your employees will also have rocks. The reason to limit rocks, to, <laughs> to, let's say rocks five more times. The reason to limit rocks to three or seven, preferably closer to three, is that you're going to break the organization into a habit of trying to focus on everything at once. It simply can't be done. By limiting priorities, you can focus on what is most important. With the increased intensity of focusing on a limited number of rocks, people will accomplish more. The way you move your company forward is one 90-day period at a time. So we'll stop here for a second before we go to the next piece on this, which is the meeting pulse, and talk about the rocks. So we as a company have a meeting every single week. Right, this huddle call goes on and we're getting better at our times of shortening it. But this huddle call is to keep everybody in tune to what numbers specifically that we are meeting and or missing and talking about 
what is closing, what is revenue, and what is lined up in the pipeline. So, and we'll, we'll go around here in a second because everybody's kind of got their own rocks individually. But um, the main focus as a business owner is to know what contracts were out, or actually in this case, we always care about how many calls went out, how many calls came in, how many contracts went out and based on appointments, and then what's revenue set to close, right? So from a 10,000 foot level as an owner, if I can measure those three things weekly, we can tell where we're going as far as revenue is coming in or something got missed or there's a leak somewhere in the system, right? So now we can go down individually. So actually let's talk about what your priority for rocks are every week. Yeah, so this is something we've really been trying to dig into for a couple of months now is what are our rocks and what are our, you know, both weekly, monthly and quarterly or every 90 days. And so some of the things that I've been focusing on personally are um, working on setting up processes for the cold caller, for our new VAs that I talked about in chapter seven, because we're restructuring that a lot of my day-to-day -day activity has been uh, focusing on making those processes and making those training videos so that someone else can take that over and I can keep working on things. Uh, like closing coordinating or building other things behind the scenes. And actually this podcast and the YouTube channel and the Instagram account were all things that were like in, you know, March, April were part of my goals. And then when quarantine hit, it was like, huh, I guess there's no better time than now. <laughs> so it was a little bit farther down on my list, but it got pushed up so that we could start getting content out to you guys. And so that's going to be another big thing for my, after I'm done shifting a lot of the processes off, uh, I want to start getting better about getting new content for you guys and seeing what you are interested in learning about and trying to get better about that. Nice. Cam. Um, so <clears throat> the big rocks in mind for me, um, when we started, it's been a quarter ago, I think it's pretty much close to completion now, a minor tweak this week was, you know, to how we data mine um, our leads out of the different courthouses all across the peninsula and across the south side of Hampton Roads, how we pull out those um, leads, how we set up a process to where in the beginning, um, I was doing a lot of the work, we were all doing a lot of the work, honestly, and we have a a process in place and what now where a VA has been doing it. And now uh, the second rock is, you know, moving into a text platform and what does that look like? And me starting to, you know, run the system in the beginning, but now turning that over to a VA. And um, as it turns out, turning that all over to one VA and bringing another VA on board to take care of the data mining process. So that's key to what we talked about last chapter with the processes, but those were huge rocks. That's not something that you can <laughs> complete in two weeks. It just ain't happening. Um, so, but well worth it because now the data mining process is almost on autopilot. Hit a, hit a snag where the city changed the process on us this last week. So I had to rewrite that one. But short of that, all the other processes flow smoothly. And now they're set so we can bring another VA in and be like, here's here's the, the videos and the step-by-step -step processes. Let us know if you have any questions. But when anticipate little questions. So those are my huge rocks. Um, and the, the, what that will return for me is being on the phone more <laughs> and doing more deals instead of looking in the data for the deals, talking to people and doing deals. Nice, Jacob. Uh, so I'll talk about a couple that we have uh, currently in progress, right? So over the last 30 days, we kind of mentioned it a little bit in, uh, when we went through our, our chapter seven episode. Um, but it's the idea of trying to bring on VAs for cold calling on the front end of the acquisition process. So that is a big rock for us moving forward that we want to have accomplished in the next 90 days. We were actually able to go out because we were hyper-focused on it. We were able to go out and actually find two people that we are now split testing um, in about a three-week time frame. Um, and the goal was to have them up and running at the beginning of this week, which they are. Oddly enough, actually one of them is texting me right now. Um, based on uh, some conversations that she's going through with some questions. So um, that was a massive big rock. And that's obviously, you know, trying to prime us for getting into a position of 
um, better situating mine and Cameron's time on the phone with these sellers so that we are more effective and we're talking to more qualified leads, right? So that's a massive big rock. The other one is including the TVAs that we have now brought on. We also wanted to bring on a junior acquisitions manager. That big rock is set to occur uh, basically beginning of October, end of September. So we've got about four weeks to be able to go out and um, you put together a marketing platform for hiring and then start running them through a hiring process, uh, which we have set to start the first week of October. So, um, and again, you know, of course, poised to position us so that we are using our time effectively. So uh, those are the two that, that come off, uh, come off the top of my head. And then a third one for me, and I'll throw it out there because it is one for me is uh, quitting my job by December. So, so that we can officially come into real estate full time. And that is a big, big rock for me, uh, for sure. So I wanted to speak to that one because uh, it's not just about business, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, based on the time that we all have available on a daily basis, some of these things do have to occur on the personal level as well. I'm doing my first rehab, which is, <laughs> which is my fourth one. And then of course, trying to uh, position myself to be able to quit in December. So um, all of which obviously is the, uh, uh, focused on the company as a whole moving forward and being able to progress in this atmosphere, but uh, also on the personal side as well. So Awesome. <clears throat> All right. So to finish that up, guys, you can hear uh, different components of the company and different positions of the company all having their own specific rocks, right? So now let's get to the meeting pulse. For now and forever, let's dispel the myth that all meetings are bad, that meetings are a waste of time and they are already too many of them. <laughs> the fact is that while running meetings are at the moment uh, of truth for accountability, uh, to gain great traction, you probably need to meet even more than you presently do. So uh, just for a hot second here, guys, you are seeing this the way it's lined up as we are a virtual company. And when this video is being recorded, it was during the 2020 COVID debauchery, right? So during all of this, we were, we were of already in a virtual setting so that we were able to pivot, but we were already a virtual company. So for anybody that is listening to this, that is trying to grow, trying to you know, move your company, move the needle, go higher, go better, um, keep in mind, this is a big piece of this, to learn how to get yourself in a virtual setting, right? And it forced us as a company to pivot and do a lot of different things that actually made us even better as a company, right? So <clears throat> the meeting pulse, where it's talking about having too many meetings, uh, I agree to that to a certain point because this world allows you to have virtual meetings quickly and effectively take care of problems very fast, right? Um, all right, so a meeting pulse is your organization's heartbeat. Rather than long meandering meetings, a meeting pulse with a specific agenda throughout your departments will keep your organization healthy. A meeting pulse operates just like an EKG, uh, illustrating a spike. When people have to get something done for a meeting, they usually wait until the last minute and usually finish it. That's the consideration of a spike. The more you can increase the meeting interval, the more spikes you get. Wait a minute. Yes, the more intervals you get. The more spikes you get and then more business you'll finish. At first, you'll resist these regular meetings, but as soon as they become a habit, you'll embrace them. You won't know how you could have lived without them in the past. So we're going to get into this. The meeting pulse consists of two types of meeting. The first is quarterly and the second is weekly. So we'll talk about this in the 90 day world. As part of your vision, you created a three year picture. After that came a one year plan and now the 90 day world. The 90 day idea stems from a natural phenomenon. The human being stumble, they get off track, they lose focus, and roughly every 90 days this happens. To address this aspect of human nature, you must implement a routine throughout the organization that creates a 90-day world. To repeat 90 days about as long as a human being can stay focused. <laughs> as humans nature, so stop fighting it 
and solve the problem by following a quarterly meeting pulse, thereby creating a 90 day world for your company. Um, and then there's some notes here, how to create and run the EOS quarterly meeting pulse. Um, this can be found in the book at 179 and 184. And then how to create and run an EOS meeting pulse that can be found on 184 and 189. So for a hot second, let's talk about this because the last one we're gonna be hitting is the weekly meeting pulse. Um, let's start with Ashley on the 90 day world. How do you, how would you operate or talk to what you do in a 90 day setting? Yeah. First, I want to say that this is actually something we have not implemented yet. This, uh, in, in some respects, we have not implemented the all day, 90 day, uh, the all day quarterly meeting. <laughs> and that's something that we want to do. And I think we're going to start shifting into that a little bit more because right now we're shifting to twice a month business development meetings that are about three hours. And so moving into the end of this year, beginning of next year, we are definitely going to have those all day quarterly meetings to go over things. Uh, with that being said, but with, yeah, with that being said, we do a really good job of having those 90 day goals or those quarterly goals. We typically try to track things on 90 days. So like if we want to try something, let's give it a shot for 90 days and see what happens. And then if we're still not sure at that point, we can keep going or we can stop it. Um, for my position, some of the things that are 90 day goals are generally setting things up. So if that means, okay, in the next 90 days, I want to develop something within our CRM system so that we can, in one place, you can input all the numbers and it'll spit out what your profit would be for a subject to deal versus a cash deal versus an owner finance deal. And that's something that I did get done within 90 days and it took some time to pull all the numbers together to put it into the system so that it would calculate correctly and then to make the video <laughs> explaining how to use it and honestly that took the longest time uh, just finding time to carve out and do that video but that's kind of what my 90 day goals look like it's generally around creating something and by the end of the 90 days I like to have if not if not the second draft or final draft, at least a first draft and a system or a process in place so that everyone can start testing it. And then maybe the next 90 days, my rock will be okay, or their rocks will be, go ahead and test out, test this out, give me feedback, and then we'll keep reevaluating it as we go. Nice. Cam? Yeah, so I think that um, as far as the 90 day, the meetings and the weekly polls, Definitely looking forward to as we move toward having those 90 day meetings, because I think they're really crucial because even in these few um, biweekly meetings that we've had for a few hours, we've discovered a lot um, of things that I think if we tried to, i.e. me build something on my own, Jacob build something on his own, Ashley sort of, it wouldn't have been near as effective because we would be missing things and we're, um, redirecting our focus in some terms and definitely <laughs> repositioning some of our strategies majorly in how we contact customers, um, customers being sellers and, and how we um, convert them to a lead and convert them to a sale. So definitely important 90 day meetings and the weekly pulse meetings to um, get those updates that you don't generally need every day, but you definitely need to circle back around and make sure that um, everybody's still on track to what was the focus last week and um, what needs to be the focus throughout this week. Jacob. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> I think going back to some of the things that Cam just covered, right? I mean, just these couple of biweekly meetings that we've had where all of us have gotten in the room together to, you know, uh, take a look at what the vision looks like moving forward for creating some of these processes like the BAs, the jams and so on. All of those meetings the, thus far have been incredibly effective uh, with all four of us in the room. And, and I think that that's a, it's really exciting and it's cool to see because I think it just brings it into perspective, like how important some of these meetings actually are. Um, the one thing that I'll say, and, and I think that it's obviously assumed and I, I even think that Ashley might've covered it as well, but um, you know, the idea of like, so we have these 90 day windows and these 90 day targets as far as the big rocks are concerned. Well, the weekly meetings, 
you know, basically break those down into smaller chunks to swallow, right? I mean, it's the idea of like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? So that's what these weekly meetings are. It's, it's the smaller incremental individual steps that have to occur that will ultimately get you to that big rock goal. And uh, I mean, it's great to be able to check in on a weekly basis and see what the progress is. And, you know, and sometimes like, I mean, it's true, right? Like we're not always like, there are some things that get missed and so on. And it's kind of like a check as well. It's like, oh shoot, I forgot to go back and do that, right? That needs to get done before we're able to proceed to, you know, step two or whatever have you. So just as a format for keeping everybody on track and moving towards that big rock goal, these weekly meetings are extremely important in order to make that happen. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to keep mine short and sweet this time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's keep going because that's going to get us into what people were you know, talking about, which is the weekly meeting pulse or what we call the huddle call. So a quick overview of us as a company, we have a weekly huddle call that happens on Wednesdays. Um, typically it's in the morning, but sometimes it has to shift. No matter what that call happens and everybody's brought up to speed. Okay. So, so that you guys see what we're talking about. We care about the numbers of the contracts in the calls out, what's set to close. And if there's some issues on it, that's fine. We're going to start, we've started to dial back on that um, to not spend too much time on it, but that's very important guys to understand that things do slip through the cracks, right? And this is what this weekly call is for. So the weekly meeting pulse, the traction process continues taking the, the vision down to the ground. We are now narrowing in from quarterly to weekly. Implementing this step will really create traction and help you execute the vision. Once the quarterly priorities are set, you must meet on a weekly basis to stay focused, solve issues and communicate. The weekly pulse is your opportunity to make sure that everything stays on track. If you're on track for the week, then you're on track for the quarter, then you're on track for the year, you're on track to your vision. The meeting pulse creates consistent cadence that keeps the organization in step. And this information can be seen in the book at 189 and 198. So again, I will go around here and talk about this, but the weekly pulse or the huddle call as we call it, is probably one of the most um, game changers I discovered from being a single person business owner to where we're at as an organization now and the team members that we do have at Full Circle. Um, everybody is rolling right along and we've actually within the past few months started condensing down the time. Ashley and I have a meeting that we do specifically for us, but then the company meeting has one and we've narrowed it down to like 30 minutes roughly between Ashley and I, and then we're trying to get it between like 30 minutes and 45 minutes for the company. Um, and this is just so that, and this happens with everybody guys, doesn't matter what company it is, right? And you'll hear us all using the word squirrel because it's real. Everybody just like for randomly will just go out left field for no reason at all and just go down a rabbit hole, right? having the ability and the agreement that anybody in the group can call that out and be like, no, nah, let's come on back. Let's, let's finish where we need to go is very important. And it's not a poke at anybody. It's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. So having that agreement throughout your company that you're going to have these meetings, you're going to walk in with a decision of what we're getting through, what we're going to define. And if there are issues we'll address, but in this window so that it doesn't allow you to drag, but so far out. Right. So we'll go around here and talk to that and get some feedback on it. Ashley, what do you think? Yeah. So it's funny because Sean has said several times that he read this book quite a few times now. And a lot of this stuff he implemented before I came on. And actually one of the things he was starting to implement when I came on was the weekly huddle call. And that was Mondays at 10 a.m. And honestly, <laughs> I mean, that that's happened since like the third or fourth month I was with Full Circle. So to me, I don't know, that's just Mondays or if it's, you know, a three-day weekend, Tuesdays, first work week, first work day of the week at 10 a.m. or 1030, we're having our huddle call. And that's just what my life has been like for the last couple of years. So to me, it's, I don't know, it, I'm used to it. And I think last week we didn't even have one. And the whole week I was like, oh, we haven't talked about these things. Like, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> so it is just, 
it, it's really important. And I think it's super helpful. I do think for a long time, Sean and I really got into the weeds on a lot of things. And these calls would be two, two and a half hours. And in reality, they don't need to be that long. Uh, sometimes like in our huddle call last week for the whole company, it, that one was a long one, but we had a lot of things we needed to talk about and that's fine. But our huddle call this morning was, I think like 30, 35 minutes. 35. Yeah. Woo. Between me and Sean. And part of that has been, we looked at the, our agenda and said, okay, something we used to do was to talk about every single property in detail that we had under contract. And in reality, we don't need to do that. We're keeping the system updated, hopefully. And so all of the updates are in there. Unless there's an issue, you know, mystery child pops up and you're trying to deal with that because it happens more than you think, guys. Um, <laughs> you know, then you might spend some more time discussing it and how you're going to handle it. But for the most part, I as transaction coordinator and the only one that really needs to know all the intricacies of what is happening with each file, what list of errors needs to be filed, what kind of judgment we're looking for, and that kind of thing. Yep. Awesome. Cam? Um, yeah, I, I agree that <clears throat> our our huddle calls weekly for the company have scaled back, and that, that's a good thing. We need those definite major checks on the, com on the uh, properties, but Ashley's been really awesome about putting all those property updates that come in as they come into her in the property file and then just tagging us, um, which makes it super easy because then at my convenience, when I'm reviewing emails, I'm like, Oh, okay. So this, you know, this is what's happened with that transaction this week or today. Right. And if there's an update that's needed, maybe we need to talk about it, but um, that's some of the things that we tailor out of there. Um, but we still, of course, always talk about, you know, what we accomplished last week and what we're going to accomplish next week. And so everybody's kind of, Oh, on board. I'm guessing you guys can hear the dogs. <laughs> Sorry, new puppies. Yeah, nope. they're they're uh, they're excited. They sound like they're being murdered. <laughs> I was going to say it did not sound like the normal bark. <laughs> they're they're fine. I assure you. All right, are you good? Yep, good to go. All right, Jacob. I don't really have uh, much else to add other than what uh, I had nice. said previously and what Ashley and Cameron covered. So I'm just going to shut up and keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> you can add something. You can reiterate what you think is important. We're not yeah, saying I just, to shut up. No, I, I really don't think like, I mean, you guys covered basically everything that I'm in agreement with. I don't have anything else outside of that. So I think we're good. Moving on. Awesome. <laughs> so what I do want to finish out here with um, is that, one of the big things that was brought up here today was this 90 day world and this meeting pulse that is a game changer for anybody in any kind of company, right? I don't care what it is that it allows you to stay on track because like the book is saying, you're human, right? Life happens, things get in the way, forgetfulness goes about, right? It's just going to happen. So how do you control that? And then the other part that I think you actually brought up as a really good point was that some of the things that we did back in the day was because we were a smaller company, right? And the mindset of me as the business owner to get as much information as I could was because it was only a few of us. And then I, I had to have that. So remember in the beginning that if you have a smaller team to figure out how to get the most important information, that is what you as an owner need but as your teammates, what they need that's important, right? So deep diving, not necessarily is necessary. We did that in the beginning because as the owner, I felt as though it was necessary. It helped from an acquisition standpoint to a disposition standpoint to understand things. Take this as a heed warning. From you as a small business owner growing, it's not necessary for every single person in your company to understand every single working. It almost goes against what the book of traction is speaking about. So that made me kind of reinvent, I guess, or take things out that were not necessary and where time sucks as, as, as it would, I guess I would say, but like it took a lot of time away from the team that they could focus on being on the phone or focus on their rocks, focus on what they're, what they're working on. So keep that in mind from a business owner that was there to where we are now and enjoy the process, right? And be okay with the process. Don't rush it. 
And this is something that I have learned also over time as a business owner is that everybody's so quick to get to the money, but they're not as quick to get through the process and the process, meaning developing your own process. What works for us today is not going to work for you as a company, but you can take some of these recordings and experiences and hopefully learn from them and learn from those mistakes um, and allow yourself to, you know, curve that learning experience to get you where you want to go. So I think that's about it for this chapter. Um, that would close us out for the, uh, what was this called? The traction. Component. Yeah. So thanks again so much, you guys, for listening in and continuing to come back for the podcast or the YouTube channel. Hopefully you're coming back. This was chapter eight of Traction by Gina Wickman. And we'll be back next week with chapter nine. We are very quickly reaching the end of the book. So if you have ideas for what our second or our third book will be, let us know. We're trying to decide on our second book right now. We'll probably do a little bit of a pause in between them. And yeah, thanks so much for listening. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.